Hi everyone. So today I'm packaging a figure, so I thought I would film the process. Um, when I first started sculpting many years ago, I found it really difficult to find any information on how to package a figure. And when you have to post abroad, it can be quite stressful, especially if you do have breakages. And in the very beginning I did have some, until I found this process. Uh, this is not entirely my idea. I've, I've adjusted it to my own thing, but it comes from Anna Marie. Um, she was so kind, the first person I had known who was kind enough to share how she packaged her figures. And I think that everyone should know how to package because if something does arrive bro broken, it gives Polly McClay a bad name and that gives the world of Polly McClay a bad name and we don't want that. So everyone should know how to package figures well. And so I'm going to share what has worked for me for at least seven years now. I've not had a breakage in seven years at least. So for me, I feel like this is a tried and tested method that does seem to work. So what I do is I use a, po a polystyrene box. That I chose these um, mainly because they are light but also strong. They, this will then get packaged into another box, but this is the box I packaged the figure in to begin with. I then use some, which I will show you, but it's very dark, so it probably doesn't shine up. This is the packaging foam. It is a special packaging foam that you can get anywhere. Um, since I showed this video, I, I, well, I showed this technique to Juliana Lepine, um, a while ago when she needed to package some figures and she then pr sort of progressed it a bit more which I haven't f uh, found, I haven't tried myself but sounds like a really good idea there's actually some packaging foam you can get that is made up of small squares that you then take out the squares to build a sort of bed for your uh, object to lie in um, what I do is I cut out this foam, but the small square foam is actually a really great idea and I will put a link in the description to show um, for, for where you can get that from, so if you wanted to try it. I haven't personally tried that yet, so I'm just going to show you the technique I've used for a very long time, which is basically the same thing, it's just that my foam you have to cut, you, don't, you can't take out the little square pieces of foam. So when I order the foam, I order it to the size of the box, and I order a lid and a box. So one, one piece of foam is big and the other one is a little lid that would then fit on top. So first of all, I'm going to cut the uh, base. So before I pack the figure in the foam, I want to make sure that her hair does not get messed up during the journey. So I use tissue paper and I just wrap that around just making sure that it will cover her hair and sort of keep it, hold it in place and then I just take that down. So now it's time to cut the sort of bed that you're going to lie your figure in. So if I did it straight up and down she wouldn't fit. Um, these boxes, uh, the custom pack uh, polystyrene boxes, only come in certain sizes. So. It, it, you don't have to, this is just the size that I have got used to using. You could always, because it does restrict you a little bit, so when you want to do a figure with sort of arms that are outstretched or legs that are outstretched, it can be a bit restrictive. So I do sometimes use a bigger size. Um, the best thing to do is to get ones that are uh, not very deep but are very wide because then you can really, um, you know, sort of do whatever you want and not really worry too much about... Um, whether you're, you're, you're going to have room. But for this particular one, I have this size, so my, my figure is 10 inches tall, so I lay her on the side because then she will fit very ne nicely uh, and her, there will be space around her uh, when I cut, it, cut her out of the foam, cut the bed out of the foam. So the first thing to do is to draw around the figure um, so that you can uh, get an idea of where you need to cut. So I keep it quite close to the figure, just make sure you don't actually draw on her. <laughs> I have to take into account um, if you have any things that stick out, but that's okay. So on this side there's not much that would be sticking out, so I'll just draw up around her head. When it gets to the hand, you want space for the hand, so close to the body for the arm, but then a little bit of a space around the hand. 
back in again here and then quite close to her hips because those areas are solid and can be uh, kept quite close. And then the same with her feet, you want to leave a bit of a space around the feet and then coming back in for the legs. The other thing that you need to take uh, note of, this one is a pretty simple pose, um, but if you have an arm that's perhaps reaching further back or a leg that's reaching further back, you have to mark that out. What The only part I would mark out on this one is the curvature of her, of her back. So this area here, I just mark as being higher than the rest. Uh, if you had an arm that was stretched back, you would need to then draw that area off. Say it was a leg that was stretched back. You would then draw that area off and just mark that as needing to go deeper than the other side. So now I have a knife that I use that's quite sharp um, that I will now cut around. So I dig into the, the foam and cut around. First of all, cut a layer which just takes out most of the top layer of foam. I think in this case if you had this, the little squares you could l remove them um, which would probably be a lot easier. I think the one advantage with cutting the foam is that you can cut it very very close to the body so that you keep um, so that you keep the secureness, you're keeping a lot of the, the outside of the foam in solid and quite strong. Then I would just cut the area that I want to be slightly higher separate from the rest and then pull out this part of the foam first. So I'm just cutting down the middle to make it easier to pull it out and across like that. It just helps to be able to pull small sections at a time. And then you just reach in, well I just re reach in and pull it out. This foam is glued halfway down so um, that's why it's sort of pulling away from there but I will cut that deeper anyway. So I've cut off the um, in between the, the part that where her the arch of her back will go. Um, I'm just trying to keep it slightly higher than the rest, so I don't forget that that's, that area needs to be slightly higher. So now we're going to level two and cut a little bit deeper. Keeping this area where her head will be, you want to have a space between her head and the foam because you want to keep the hair as nice as possible so it's not rubbing on the foam while it's in the uh, while it's traveling um, ideally it doesn't move at all anyway so hopefully it wouldn't matter really if it was up against the foam so that's just um, that's just in case but with this technique you would want the figure not to be able to move at all no matter how it gets banged So I'm now just trying to pull out the, a little bit of the second layer. You don't want to go too deep, but it does need to be deep enough that it sinks into the foam and none of the uh, body parts are sticking out. This one, as I say, is quite simple pose, so is, it is an easier one to do.
and then just cutting the arch area a little bit lower to, so that it's not too high. So now I have the basic shape. Now I need to just check that she will lie in there um, and everything will be okay and it won't she won't be her her hand is sort of flush with the foam. So when I put the lid on, I would need to make a little bit of a space there on the lid. I will show you how to do that. Now her feet there are touching the foam a little bit, so I'm going to cut away a little bit more foam there. Um, everything else on this one is okay because it is such a simple pose. So once you've cut everywhere out and you know that the areas that are uh, fragile have a lot of space around them, feet and hands, um, and the rest of it is quite close to her body so that it holds quite firmly, although I will put extra foam there as I'll show you later. So now, before I put, her, put the foam into the polystyrene box, I need to just mark where I would like to put ribbon because the most important thing in this packaging is that you tie the, the figure down. If you can package it as wonderfully as you want, but if that figure is not tied down, it will move in the packaging and that can cause breakage. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so, so I mark, sort of push my pencil in and sort of mark my colored pencil where I want to put ribbon. Um, and I usually choose the areas that are the most solid um, strong, you know, big, thick areas of the body. So it's usually uh, around the hips and waist and the leg. So I'm going to put one there, and I usually put two. And the second one I'm going to do in the thickest part of her leg down here. So if I just make the marks, and then I can remove the figure from the foam, and the marks will be there. And then I slide the foam into the polystyrene box. And if you have these cut to size, they should fit very uh, tightly, which is what you want. So now that I've made the marks on the foam and I've pushed it into the polystyrene box, I then take a knitting needle and tape with some masking tape the end of the ribbon to the knitting needle. And then I press that into where the mark is. So I look for the mark that I made with my coloured pencil. And it's quite nice if it's really close to this high, higher area so that when, you, when, the, when the ribbon is pressing down, the, the figure is being pressed against the highest area. Um, so it's the strongest area of the clay and also the strongest area of the foam, if that makes sense. Then press it through, right through, and push it out the other side. So out the other side of the polystyrene box. You then just have to remove the masking tape just hold on to the ribbon and then pull the knitting needle out and then your ribbon is, has come through the bottom and then you have to do that on the other side again And then I do the same thing again for where the feet will be.
So now you have two loops of ribbon. So I'll put the figure back in now and when you do it you have to loop them through you have to loop her legs and her body through. If you had a, a figure where the, the, the arm was close to the body or there was some way that the arm was there was, a, there was a space but then it was also connected to the body say there was a, a shirt sleeve or something that meant that there wasn't a space between the arm and the body so that you could move the ribbon up what you'd have to do is uh, dig the ribbon in one side put the figure in and then dig the ribbon in the other side through the gap if that makes sense and then pull it down at the bottom you can do it, I've, I've done that many times before so now I just pull the ribbons tight, try not to let them twist so that they look neat when they're uh, wrapped around the figure. Like that. So when those are tied very tight, if I hold them at the bottom, the figure won't, won't move. But now just to be really sure that it won't move, um, I then take pieces of the, the foam that I've cut out of the box and I put them, I sort of wedge them between the figure, sort of choosing areas where it sh there are strong, strong pieces of clay like against her arm and against her legs and against the body if there's any sort of spaces just to kind of wedge her in even more so that there's really no room for movement even if the box is knocked around in the post. So I just cut, cut pieces off and then I just find areas. You need a piece that's bigger than the, the space so that it kind of pushes against the space so it's giving a bit of strength, a bit of um, toughness. So fatter than the, the space you want to push it into, but obviously not too fat. So just move the, the foam aside and then just wedge it in. So I just keep going down the body, choosing areas that are strong and will be able to take the pressure of the foam to hold, hold the figure in place. For example, on her leg. So now it's time to make the lid. So with this figure, although her, her hand is actually... Uh, below this the surface of that uh, layer this layer of uh, foam I'm still going to just make a little bit of a indentation on the lid to make sure that the hand w wouldn't touch anyway I don't think it would anyway but I'll basically just do it so I can show you how to do it, how I would do it so the way I do it is I imagine you have to imagine that this is going to be turned over onto that side so it has to be the opposite side um, when you draw it to where it's going to be. So that hand is on that side, so I have to look at the space between the wall and her hand, but then when I draw it, it's from this side to this side because it's going to turn over like that. So, I sort of look at where it is. And I look at the space between the wall and the hand and then kind of come down and then measure it this way as well. It's a very visual way. I'm sure you could do it with a ruler and get something more accurate. But I just need an area that is cut out, cut away from her hand. So once I've drawn that, then I'll just cut that out with my knife again. And you just want it to be a shallow indentation. Obviously it would depend on the figure you're doing and how much the limbs do stick out. I mean, sometimes they do stick out more, in which case obviously you would just dig something a lot deeper than that. So I just need a small indentation just to make sure that the hand won't touch there. So let me see if I've got it in the right place. So I turn it around, put it into the box, and then just lift and see. And yes, it's in the right place. So then I put the lid on, um, but before I seal it up, I would tie the bottom. So that's my next job is to tie the bottom, tie the ribbons at the bottom. So to tie the ribbons at the bottom, um, I'm just going to pull them, hold, hold the box and just sort of make sure that they're solid. 
that are pulled through tight. Then I turn it over and the figure will stay because we've wedged her in anyway. So then I take the, the, the ends and just tie them into a, a bow. But what I do first, just to make sure that I have it very tight, so we want it really, really tight. So I want to secure that and while I tie a bow I want to be sure that it stays tight. So I take some sellotape and just glue it or stick it over the tie I've just made to make sure that that tie does not loosen while I tie a bow. And then on top of that I'll just tie a bow like that. And then I'll just cut the ends. And then to make sure that that stays very secure I just tape over with a thicker piece of sellotape. And I would do the same for the second one. So now when you turn it round, you can see that those ribbons are very, very tight and held in place. And if you try to move her, she won't move at all. So at the end, before I close the box up, I want to put it in the base so that I can conserve space as much as possible. So I want the base to kind of be part of the packaging. So I choose the area which has the most foam and then press the rod of the base into the polystyrene and through the foam. And then I would tape that to the side of the box. So the rod is going into this part of the foam so it's not affecting the figure at all and it's keeping the base really close to the box. Once I've done all that, um, I then can just put the lid on, make sure that my indentation is in the right place for the hand and then just slide it on and I can just lift the thick foam slightly like that and look through underneath and make sure that the the gap for the hand is in the right place and there you go and then I would just put the lid on and then I seal that up with instructions on how to undo it um, I would just my instructions are basically um, when you come to untie your figure you just turn it over first undo these and undo untie the ribbons and then turn it back to the right side and then pull the ribbon, the ribbon through the uh, foam before you try to take the figure out. So I just have a little bit of instruction that I uh, attach to the top of the box just, with, just to help people when it comes to uh, undoing the figure. So now that my box, my polystyrene box is ready, I now need to put it into my double walled uh, cardboard box. So I have boxes that have been custom made. You can find places online that will custom make a cardboard box to fit, you know, whatever size you want. So my, my polystyrene box fits in with a slight space around the sides. And these are my uh, notif notices that I stick to the top of my box. One is the instructions on how to unwrap her. How to, how to unwrap the figure like I explained earlier and this is a note to the customs officials which basically says please if you are going to open this box because a lot of the time I post internationally could you just uh, slit open the lid you know lift the lid and look inside rather than try to take the, the figure out altogether um, so the first thing I do is line the bottom with pieces of biodegradable uh, chips um, and bits of polystyrene that I might have so I just use whatever I have. So I just form a layer on the bottom and then I place my box into the, the cardboard box and then I would fill the sides up with the polystyrene chips 
once I, once I filled the whole box, uh, all round the sides, p packing in the polystyrene chips quite tightly, I then put my paperwork on top in a, in a plastic envelope and then cover the whole top of the area with another layer of the polystyrene chips and then I would seal the box. And that is how I do my packing.